Mr. Akrianto Daud, M.E.D. Ph.D., uh, date of birth, June 20, uh, 1975. Uh, he is now a lecturer of English Education Department in Universitas Riau, Indonesia. He has a doctoral degree from in teacher education from Monash University, Australia. So, three of today's speakers. Uh, I think all of the speakers today are Australian uh, scholars before. So, and also uh, have made, have master degree also in Monash in Basel International. And if I'm mistaken, she also the vice coordinator of Eflin uh, Regional of Riau. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is a little bit about the educational background of uh, Mr. Akrenta Daud. So, if you are ready now, so please, Mr. Akrenta Daud. Yeah, thank nice you call. for Dr. Uh, Kali Salim, Pak yeah, Hanif, organizing committee, and Prof. Adang, and uh, other colleagues from UPI. And I'm happy to meet again Prof. Peter here, and Dr. Araya, and also Ibu Dr. Sri Setiarini. Greeting for everyone. Okay, uh, in my session, I'm going to share some ideas how to conduct research during this difficult situation or during this COVID-19 outbreak. Specifically, I'm going to discuss some methodolog methodological choices. Uh, about me, it has been introduced by moderator. Thank you, moderator. I will skip this. And this is the overview of my presentation. So I'll begin by again reminding us with some limitation that we are dealing with during this COVID-19 outbreak. And then um, in the second, this is the main part of my presentation. I'm going to discuss some methodological choices that we can do in conducting research. Uh, there are some ideas that actually have been mentioned by previous presenters. Uh, including uh, ideas from Dr. Araya talking about paradigm shift or uh, mindset changes. Hey. All right, now let's move Thank to you. the second one. Yeah, we, are, we all know that we are not living in this unprecedented, unprecedented and unexpected and difficult situation. Because of COVID-19, we have physical distancing, we know all of this, even there are some countries are still locked down. That's uh, what's now happening in Australia. Uh, here, uh, Philippines also will go, will go back to lockdown situation. So this is hard life anyway. However, I think uh, we agree with this one. Just like economy and other part of our life, education cannot wait. Yeah, we have to keep moving, uh, including in conducting research. So during this difficult situation, now the question, how can we conduct our research, okay? But at the same time, we have to remember in conducting research during this outbreak, we have to put safety and health first, okay? So we have to save our life, that is the first priority, but at the same time, education can keep going. So how can we deal with this? Now I'll come to my second main part of presentation. So how can we conduct research during this pandemic? Just like Dr. Araya just presented that in this situation, I think I prefer to be somebody who has a growing mindset, yeah? In other, uh, in other words, we have to change our paradigm in conducting research. So in this case, I think we have to sit from face to face field work. This is traditional data collection that we have done. I think if we, we I think if we have done research before, I think we will prefer to do face-to-face -face field work in conducting research. 
Uh, by the way, I'm a qualitative researcher, actually. Uh, I used to conduct interview face-to-face, -face, for example. I used to visit classroom to do observation in the classroom. Uh, I used to conduct also offline uh, focus group discussion to collect data for my research. But today, because of the limitation, we have to move away from that traditional face-to-face uh, -face interaction to be more online and digital-based methodologies. So digital methods in this case, simply understood as the use of online and digital technologies to collect and analyze research data. Yes, we are now living in difficult situation, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but the good news is we have a lot of platforms that we can employ, we can use to connect and to collect data and to connect with our research participants. I'm going to talk about it later. In general, we, yeah, let's look at this slide. In relation to ideas moving from traditional face-to-face -to, -face to more digital-based methodological choices, we have, in general, two options in collecting data. So of course, this is the traditional one. We have been familiar with this. We conduct it, we used to conduct interviews face-to-face, -face, FGD or paper-based survey, experiment in our lab, uh, doing field trip or observation and other methods of data collection. Now, because of this pandemic, we need to do more digital-based. And when we are doing digital-based methodological choices, we have two options, whether we are going to do that synchronous mode or asynchronous mode. What is synchronous mode? This is the platform that enable us to have virtual real-time interaction while researchers and participants co-present at the same time. So with this synchronous mode, we can have live interviews, we can interact in time, yeah? Researchers and participants see each other and directly, immediately. Or we can also conduct TV or live observation, or we can do also online text-based discussion, yeah, by synchronous mode. But because of some reasons, probably you prefer to do asynchronous mode. What is asynchronous mode? This is a platform that enable you to conduct not existing or not happening interaction at the same time. Yeah, in this case, you probably prefer to collect data through online survey, for example, or you collect data from journal diaries, or you collect data from asynchronous interviews, like email-based interviews, for example. This is what, uh, some examples of asynchronous uh, methods of data collection. Of course, this all really depending depend on your research objectives and your methodological preferences and also considering your participant situation, okay? All right, but in general, this is the, 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 the what is it, the option or the alternative. Of course, these, all of these are not entirely new, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we, I think some of us have done this online interview before. But after pandemic or after this difficult situation, these digital-based methodical cho uh, choices get the momentum. So they will be employed more, more significantly compared to before pandemic. And now the next question, how can we do this synchronous or asynchronous methods of data collection or what kind of platforms that we can use? Here we are. Okay. Wait, there is uh, a bit problem with my slide. Okay, here we go. Yeah, these are some platforms that we can use for synchronous. Remember, synchronous is uh, direct, real time, and coexist at the same time. Uh, between participants and researchers. Yeah, you can do, you can collect data through phone call. I think we have done this. Maybe some of us have done this before. Yeah, or you can do, you can use Skype. And this, this is one of, 
popular platforms before pandemic. However, after pandemic, I think uh, most of us now become more familiar with Zoom, Google Meet, or WebEx meeting. These are application actually, these applications are actually similar to each other. Uh, the features of application enable us to have, again, real-time communication, co-presence, and have direct interactivity between researchers and participants. And I found this application also very practical. It, it saves a lot of time, it saves a lot of money. Yeah, so it is very efficient. And one thing very specific that I like as researcher with this uh, platform is because most of the platform have video recording feature. So this is a good thing uh, compared to uh, recording your phone call, for example, you rely on audio only, but because of using this platform, you can also record video. And I think as a researcher, this feature is very important. Why this feature is very important? Because video recordings enables us to get detailed description of the data, including both verbal and non-verbal data, such as facial expressions, gestures, or body languages from the participants. You know, if you are a qualitative researcher, you really rely on participants' data. And the, the, the richer data you get, the richer interpretation that you can have from your data. The problem is verbal data, we cannot really capture all potential meaning generated from the data. However, if you have both audio and visual data at the same time, I believe this nonverbal data is very important for us because we can enrich our written data with visual data. For example, in verbal data, a participant might say, no, I don't agree with that, but their facial expressions say different, different gesture. Or if participants say yes, but their facial expression looks that they are not sure, as, par as researcher, of course, this facial expression or this, this body language means something. So you can use it as the basis of your data interpretation later. That yes, in written, in written data should be compared to their facial expression, for example. So uh, by the end of the day, I think as a, as a teacher, we might know that one of the key terms in communication that non-verbal communications can be more reliable than verbal communication, okay? So that's why, uh, in case you are not really familiar with some of these platforms, uh, please explore that. However, I believe most of us now getting more familiar with these platforms. Yeah, most of them are free. Yeah. However, uh, some platform uh, uh, you have to pay for uh, premium or extra features. Let me continue. And then how about for asynchronous data collection? Yeah, for example, if you conduct uh, online, if you conduct survey, for example, it is now easy for you to conduct survey online. Before COVID-19, we might have been familiar with SurveyMonkey, for example. This is a platform that we can use to distribute survey online. There are some free features, yeah, but with some limitations, of course. Uh, you have to pay for complete you might also have been familiar with go so go survey yeah similar to survey monkey and today google form is getting more popular i think used by researchers in conducting online survey uh, and then later another another product from microsoft it's called microsoft form is simil very similar to google form they are free you can also make use of these platform to conduct online survey. And I also assume that some of us have been familiar with using this, but in case if you are not familiar with how to conduct online survey or how to construct your survey using this platform, 
is a very timely now for you to explore this. Of course, I'm not going to teach you now how to construct online survey because of only 15 minute presentation. But the point is, I found this Google form, for example, is very useful, very handy, very easy to use in collecting data. So please explore. You can go to YouTube and then see there are lots of tutorial available in YouTube in, in, in uh, relation to how to conduct online survey using Google form. Okay. Uh, Wait, uh, should be next slide. Okay, next. What are the good things of online survey? Look, this is how it works, everyone. So we construct our survey, and when we finish, we distribute it easily through many platforms like uh, like WhatsApp, like email, like SMS. Yeah, just share the link. And then it collects data very quick, yeah, because people can easily uh, fill in the survey wherever and whenever they are. And then the specific and very interesting feature of most of this online survey is it can analyze results automatically. Okay, so later the result of your survey has uh, has been grouped and has been analyzed in such a way. You can see the percentage, you can see the graphs. So it's, it's very handy, I think. Okay, so please explore if you're not yet familiar with this uh, some uh, platform for online survey. So in short, I can say that these online survey have lots of advantages, it can be very cheap compared to other methods. Yeah, compared to paper-based survey, for example, because you need to post that, you need to print, and sometimes you have to you drop the, the paper-based survey to certain area, which is not in, which is not possible today. Okay, it is uh, it has quick turnaround. It is very quick. Yeah, if your survey is only uh, let's say ten minutes, so after ten minutes or after fifteen minutes, you will get respond from your respondents or from your participants, and you can also monitor. Yeah, how how it works in your uh, platform. You can see how many people have return your survey and what is the percentage where are they from what is their answer okay so you can monitor that yeah very very handy and using online survey is also uh, uh, enable us to avoid what we call by interviewers bias because you know sometimes what it happens when we have offline interview at face to face Sometimes there is what we call by power relation issue between researchers and participants, especially when you are a lecturer in university and your participants are students. You know, uh, especially in Indonesia, you, there is a power relation issue between lecturer or university professor with students. Sometimes, you know, because of cultural issues, uh, students neglect to say or a student do, do not really want to say no for a question actually they want to say no that's because they want to make you you as their lecturers happy however if you do this online this potential power relation issue and this interviewers bias will be uh what is it will be minimalized or will be minimal okay so uh these are some reasons why we can do online survey more during this uh, COVID-19 and also its adaptability is flexible okay people can can fill in the survey whenever and wherever they are or whenever they are available they you, they don't have to sit on certain place they can do it uh, you know wherever like uh, during their traveling or during uh, sit, uh, waiting for bus in a bus station for example wherever and whenever they are okay very very handy okay Okay, another option for data collection is digital diaries, especially when you are a collective researcher collecting uh, stories from your participants, you can ask or you can suggest your participants to use one of these uh, journaling apps. Okay? Some journals are free, some journal needs to, uh, you have to pay for complete uh, features, but for basic uh, need in in collecting data through digital uh, through diaries or journaling uh, 
you can use uh, one of these application. Yeah, it's easy to entry. They have pleasant interface. Uh, they also have automatic reminders. And the good things also from the Dari, they, they have exporting feature. So for example, after one, uh, one Dari, if you want the participants to give it back to you, they can export their Dari into PDF file or RTF file, and then they can send it to you immediately. Okay, so you don't have to come and see them in person. They can do it online, of course. One last thing that I want to share is we also can explore and employ social media for our data collection during this pandemic, everyone. You know, even Facebook now, I, are you aware that today Facebook has, has their latest feature? that you can also have something like Google Meet, or you can also have some. Yeah, so you can also use uh, uh, social media like Instagram. Uh, for those who have, who are, uh, maybe some of you are not yet familiar with Instagram. You know maybe Instagram, that is social media, but for some people, especially those over 40, they do not really play in Instagram. But remember, if you are dealing with participant for young, young age participant, most of them play in Instagram and you can approach them through their Instagram. And one of the features in Instagram is Insta story. I'll show you one of examples, what I did uh, two years ago to collect data from Insta story. Okay, I'll show you this video. Okay. Please listen and see how it works. So I post questions about their opinion about something in their Insta story, and my participants directly answer the questions or post their opinion. Okay, and look how it works. Yeah, that is the question. And that is their answer. How do you find a good teacher? Teacher who can explain the material in easiest way and very understandable. A good teacher is like you, sir. This is their answer anyway. And yeah, this is another opinion. Yeah. This is Indonesian anyway. Sorry if you don't understand Indonesian. Yeah, a good teacher is the one who knows how to deal with student, the one who passionately in teaching, caring, respect student, motivate student, teacher who can inspire the student, a teacher without slide. Yeah. <laughs> so a good teacher is a teacher without slide. This is very interesting, right? And the one who doesn't only teach but also motivates, like you, sir, katanya, they said. And do you think you will choose teaching? Yes. Okay. Probably yes, because I believe. So basically I have two questions here and you can see their answer. And I got their answer immediately from their Instagram. Yeah. It's called Insta story. Yeah. In Instagram. Okay. So if you want to approach younger participants, everyone, I suggest you also to think of possibility in Instagram or other social media in collecting data, okay? In collecting data. Yeah, this is another, another answer. So as researcher, I can now use some of this data as the finding, yeah, if I want. So the point of this, okay, this is the, yeah, this, this was my pic, this is my picture when I was in UP, is it two years ago? Okay. Okay. Yang di Google lang ditiru ya. It meaning that teacher is the one who we uh, model upon or we follow. Teacher who can make the student love the subject and want to learn it more and more. Yes, that's it. Okay, come back to uh, my point. This so there are a lot other possibilities that we can now use to keep our research going. So COVID 
basically is not yeah it 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 brings some limitation to our life but just like dr araya it also brings lots of opportunity to explore okay hopefully we can explore some of these ideas in our for our research that's all everyone thank you for listening to me i give it back to moderator assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, okay. Mr. Uh, I know that there are several questions, especially for Mr. Afrianto in YouTube. I know at least three questions that we will uh, discuss later. <laughs>